feeling and hearing every day how society wants me to be captured, arrested, beaten up, stoned to death, to be able to see a forum like this in this esteemed university is very touching to me. I am very touched that we can finally talk about it. And that's all we are asking for, to be able to talk about it. Because I think, um, in a way, to answer the question just now by the sister just now, why isn't the law sufficient to protect LGBT? I give you a, I try not to give a too long answer to that, but imagine growing up believing that you are wrong, believing that you are a criminal, believing that therefore the law does not give you rights, the law cannot protect you. If you are beaten up, do you go to the law enforcers then? If you are sexually abused, who do you go to to claim for your right when already you think in your mind that the law will not protect you? This is what is happening to the LGBT community in Malaysia. Children are being kicked out from their homes at the age of 12, 13, 14 by their own parents. When they are kicked out, they are forced to survive in the only way they know how. They sell themselves. Where is the law to protect them? When they are abused sexually, they think they are guilty. They think they have done something wrong to deserve it. Where is the law to protect them? A lot of us who are also professional, to some miracle, believe in ourselves, study well, get some good jobs. A lot of these people in jobs get blackmailed by their colleagues, by their friends, saying, you pay me a, mon a sum of money every month, and then I will tell your boss that you are gay. Where is the law to protect them? The point is, a lot of them will not go to the police or will not report any of this because they believe that the law will not protect them. Because they are already told that they are criminals. So, all we are asking for is not to change your mind. Yeah? People are entitled to believe this is wrong, if that's what you want to believe. I'm not asking you to believe it is right if you believe it is wrong. I'm asking you for equality, that I get the same opportunities, the same treatment by the law as you get. Yeah? Same freedom not to be kicked out from homes, same access to education, to jobs. Yeah? Sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. <laughs> <laughs> because I hear these stories every day. I'm telling my friends, I hear these stories every day. It breaks my heart that my fellow Malaysians have nowhere to go to protect their humanity. Okay? So we are asking here, we can disagree on the issues of the morality, whatever. But can we agree that we have, as human beings, the equal access to the same opportunities that all of us have? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, actually, grateful to have someone to speak on your behalf. So say thank you to our brother. So, uh, uh, may I? Do you mind? You want to? Yeah, let me go first, okay? <laughs> I thought I was sending you the cue, but actually. Alright. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and good evening to my fellow non Muslim friends. I am Muhammad, I'm from Mahala Hadiz, the college inside. I'm a student here. I'm doing law, final year. Hopefully, I'll do fine. 
And I, uh, I just only have one question I would like to address. Um, not to address, it's an open question, but in response to what Megan Misham wrote, are you, I'm sorry, I'm not calling you Gashan because it makes me feel old if I call you Gashan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay. And, uh, uh, it touched me just now when you said that, when you gave us a metaphorical situation, uh, where you said that if you were to open up a kindergarten, that you would not hire a homosexual to be um, to be what for for your kindergarten, and then it occurs to me: is, homo is homosexuality being a homosexual? Is it a choice? Is it really a choice? Because this question occurred to me a long time ago, and I do some readings, and as of right now, my understanding is that uh, it is not a choice. It is planted in the genetic of an individual. Before this before the development of science, it was considered as a psychological condition, but that is no longer the case uh, of the development right now, although it is not conclusive, but it is the best that we mankind got, according to the internet. I'm not sure about the author how authoritative it is, but that's what, that is what, from my understanding. So, uh, based on that, uh, is it justifiable for me to say that when you say that you will not hire a homosexual, is it based strongly on stigmatization or is there any strong justification on that? Because what makes a person homosexual? If you say that you will not hire that person because he or she has the tendency, sexual tendency towards the same sex, then I'm, I will not, I'm not inclined to accept that happily. But if you say that you will not hire that person because he had done and act of boggery, that was not called homosexual as defined by section 377, then I can accept that. But let's say if, if you are put in a situation where you can only hire two persons for your kindergarten, once a homosexual who did not commit any homosexual act, or a person, a straight, like any straight, as straight as a guy can be, but has slept with lots of other women, will you, which one will you hire? Which one of them is better? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next question. Can we just finish the, the line? Okay. There's no more question after that lady, after that sister. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Nicole. Uh, I'm a secondary school student. Um, currently, I'm from six and I happen to be gay. And my mom, she's here with me and she accepted me for being gay. Uh, she's proud of me. My mom accepted me for being gay. Thank you. Um, okay, this is my, my story actually. I'd uh, just like to share a story of mine, a very short story. Uh, I come from a school where I'm openly gay in high school and I, I talk to friends. I'm, uh, all my friends know basically I'm gay and sadly we do have a provision in, uh, provision in our school guidebook. It's nationwide. All school students are given a secondary school guidebook which states that majority gay are the lesbian you will be suspended from school 14 days and you'll be whipped three times and you could be brought to court. Bear in mind, this is secondary school students. My teachers have taken on me before. I've been brought to the office, I've been questioned, and so and so, so on. This is what I would like to actually uh, say today. Um, this loss, which is in place, thinks that it could change us which basically led to JMM, Join and Live Asia, going on to schools to launch Tana LGBT campaigns and sex on some. What do you intend us to do? You plan us to change to the one thing that we can't be, straight? You can't change us. But what you're successfully doing is your installing fear. Absolute fear in our children. Lots and lots and lots of fear. Some of us bravely goes through it. With thankfully with parents who accept us, with friends who accept us. Some can't. Some the pain is too bad, unbearable for them. And committing suicide and running away and shutting themselves from society is the option in their mind. Uh, with that, actually, uh, I would like to actually, just one thing that I would like to highlight our fellow friend, our brother said, and also our panelist, Dr. Sham, had touched upon it opens up to murderers. Rapists, uh, 
people who perform boundary and blah blah so on. When we do equate all this with homosexuals, what I can differentiate is this. Me being gay, I do not step upon another person. But the way this, a person who commits boundary, a person who murders, steps upon another person's liberty to live and to live freely. And I think in that sense, I do believe there could be sufficient laws to prosecute them. Because they're stepping upon another person's right. But I don't see myself being gay, breaking down buildings, starting wars, killing people. My being gay is something me personal. It's something that I've accepted, my family has been my family has accepted, and so on. So in that spirit, I would like to ask Dr. Sham personally, 